So things are definitely going in an interesting direction for season three of From. I'm really looking forward to discussing the later episodes. I think after episode seven, things really tend to kind of kick up just a little bit more. And last episode wasn't bad, but I would definitely say it was a little bit more filler than anything. I mean, we did get answers like with the whole ultrasound situation with Fatima and seeing that there is no baby in her that we can actually see because I'm going to stick to that narrative right now. And then there was also the situation with Elgin and the creepy kimono lady and then her appearing in the photo behind Fatima, which I do think that that was sort of a hint of what's going to happen. There is definitely some sort of connection between that lady and Fatima that could definitely be her. Or maybe there is another connection that we're not seeing right now between the creepy kimono lady and Fatima. The lady did start appearing around the time Fatima got pregnant. So we definitely know that there is some sort of connection there. And then there's the whole pattern thing with the numbers and the fact that they're the same on both trees, but we still need to get into that a lot deeper as well. But let's just keep those things in mind as we go through episode seven. All right, so things do pick back up where they left off and <laughs> the whole situation that happens between Christy and Boyd was pretty funny because he was like, do your fucking job and figure it out. That, that was pretty funny. That shit had me laughing because Christy was like, oh my God, Boyd, you're, go you're going off on me like this? Like, what the fuck? But Christy tells Fatima that she thinks what she is experiencing is called psychosomatic pregnancy, where her body thinks that she's pregnant when she's really not. And of course, Fatima isn't trying to hear this because she's going through what she's going through. So she storms out. Ellis follows behind her. And Boyd is like, we need a plan. We got to figure this shit out. We got to do something, which leads to the whole back and forth between him and Christy. But Christy also points out something that I said as well, which is either something is growing inside of Fatima that they can't see or Fatima isn't really pregnant. And this whole psychosomatic pregnancy thing is factual. But either way, that intro was also pretty interesting and pretty funny, especially after seeing Boyd go off on Christy like that. Everybody's frustrated, but Boyd is very frustrated and he's a lot more serious about this situation and a little bit more of a hard ass right now on Christy because of this situation. But you have to remember that this baby is technically going to be Boyd's grandson. So their family is connected. So this is definitely a good reason to explain why Boyd is sort of being a little bit more of a hard ass than usual is because this is his family. So then we cut over the colony house with Victor and Henry as we see Victor getting pretty frustrated because Jasper ain't saying shit. And Henry walks in and he's like, well, it's a doll. You know, dolls don't normally talk by themselves. And of course, Henry is trying to be helpful. But at the same time, Victor's like, yeah, he was talking to Jasper. That's what I remember. But guys, we have to take note and keep in mind that Victor has not been a reliable narrator so far throughout the show. His memory came back about having a sister named Eloise after he saw the pictures that he drew. He also slowly started to remember suppressed memories about his mom and things like that. So Jasper may have not been the one speaking from what Victor can remember. Maybe it was Christopher that actually said it when he thought it was Jasper, or maybe the way Victor remembers it wasn't actually the way it happened. Those are things we have to keep in mind. There's a lot of things that are presented throughout this show to throw us off the beaten path when it's mainly just a purposeful misdirect to just throw us off when there's actually something else that we should be focusing on and keeping in mind. Then downstairs with Elgin and Tilly, Elgin's talking about how he made like a wind chime sort of thing for Fatima. And none of this stuff is really important because at this time, the Polaroid camera goes off again and presents Elgin with a picture that we don't get to see at this time. But shit's getting weirder. Then we cut to Fatima, Mariel, and Ellis as they continue to discuss the situation around the baby and how she probably should take small bites of that rotten shit since that's the only thing she can keep down. But of course, Fatima isn't feeling the idea. She doesn't want it to be acceptable. She only wants to be able to sneak away and eat rotten shit. She doesn't want people to be acceptable of her actually eating the rotten shit. So yeah, that's definitely a rock and a hard place. But of course, everybody seems to be coming from the perspective right now where they're trying to figure out where either Fatima is going crazy or maybe she is actually pregnant. We're going to be toggling in this space right now for a while, pretty much until the end of the season. We also cut outside and we see Boyd and Donna having the conversation of whether or not a Fatima should stay at Colony House. And of course, Donna's like, you know, it's probably not a good idea because if this shit turns out and something's weird and happening with Fatima, like she's growing a monster inside of her or she is a monster or whatever the case may be, this shit ain't going to turn out well. We about to have another Colony House massacre like back what happened in season one. So yeah, she's not wrong to be thinking that way. And Boyd's like, yeah, might have to make some room at the damn share station. So that's where they're at right now. She's going to have to move her crazy crazy monster ass up out of there. Then we cut out to that village out in the woods where we see Jim and some others out there still gathering up supplies to take back to the town. And during this time, we can overhear them talking about the stuff knocking around and shit outside and how it doesn't sound quite like the monsters back in town. And they just keep throwing hints at these things, but we still don't know what they are. But Jim does get to see in this moment as Tabitha, Jade, and Ethan are walking back out of the woods and he sees that 
that Tabitha is now back. And of course, understandably, he's like, what the hell, what the hell's going on? How's she back here? How, you know, what's up? And Jade tells him that Tabitha needs to see that area because she dreamed about this place when she was a kid. So before we get any more details on that situation, we cut away. Over at the clinic, Randall and Julia chopping it up and Randall's like, hey, I'm going for a walk. He's like, I don't want any company. Julia's like, sure, I'll join you. Then at this time, we cut back over to Elgin by that outdoor cellar door where we finally see that the Polaroid that was taken earlier was actually of that door. So Elgin goes down into the cellar and takes a look around, but doesn't find anything. But as he's about to leave, there's a knock on the back door behind like a dresser that he moves out of the way. And it reveals a secret door that leads to a secret room with a bed in it and a bedside table. And so what the hell is going on here? And as always, before we get more information or see any more details on that situation, we end up cutting away. But I can tell you guys that we will be learning more details about the whole cellar door situation in the next episode, I believe. But it's, it's going to get interesting. Then over at the diner, we see Officer Acosta and Kenny as she has tons more questions about the town and why is it so weird and all of this other stuff and Kenny's about to basically give her the detail spill. Then back out at the village with Tabitha and Jim. Jim's basically still trying to play it safe. He doesn't really want to indulge in the shit that Tabitha's talking about related to her dreams in the town and digging deeper and finding out more details and Jim's just kind of in the way right now if he's not going to be helpful he just has to move out of the way so tabitha can further explore this situation with her and jade that just seems to be the direction it's going in right now then out in the woods with randall and julie i believe randall reveals that he's out in the woods because he's looking for a specific type of mushroom that can help out holistically with healing and all of that stuff after speaking with christy please correct me down in the comments if i'm wrong but i believe that's what he says and during this time julie tells him how she never got her learner's permit and all of that stuff because after thomas died all of that stuff just sort of stopped and he's like well come with me so yeah then back in town at the diner kenny is still giving officer acosta the whole rundown on the town and all of the questions she has about the talisman and all of those things and kenny's trying to get her to relax and chill and all of that stuff while he gives her the details but she's like i'm not trying to get comfortable here and she just storms out but during this time the town picks fun at her by playing Ooh child by the five stair steps and basically yeah it's pretty funny because it's like it's gonna get easier which it's not gonna get easier at all but it's pretty funny. And then afterwards, back to walks in because she has some plans to reopen the diner and bring in some of that good sister cooking up in that bitch. So I know she's going to be going in. It's probably not going to be quite like Miss Lou, but back to look like she can really go in in the kitchen. So she's probably the right person to reopen the diner with. I can't remember whether or not a back to is Southern or not, but she is. She's about to bring a lot of that Southern home cooking up in there, which I'm pretty sure everybody can really use. And that's probably going to really give them the right ambition they need to get their ass home because that cooking is going to be good then after that we end up cutting back to the cellar with elgin and the creepy kimono lady who shows up later but we see him setting up the room you know dropping the bed and all of that good stuff and he also ends up uncovering some skeleton remains from the cellar as well and he looks behind him at the creepy kimono lady and asked her is this where it really happens and if i had to guess if we put the context of everything that has happened with her appearing behind fatima in the photo and we start to see a connection between all of this if i had to guess this is probably where fatima will either turn into a monster or give birth to a monster. And like I've already mentioned in the last recap, I believe the kimono lady is using Elgin the same way they used Sarah. And she's going to be trying to use him to basically get Fatima to come there and have the baby or turn into a monster. Then we cut to a brief scene of Victor arriving at Sarah's place where he's like, hey, I need to use your basement because I need Jasper to tell me a secret. So for some reason, Victor feels like that that's the only place Jasper will speak. So hey, let's see what happens. Then we cut back to outside of Colony House where we see Julie and Randall arriving to the car because Randall is planning to take Julie for a joyride and basically help her out since she never really got her driver's license or learning permit. Then back over at the sheriff's station, we have a fun little scene between Boyd and Officer Acosta where she's in there looking for a gun and Boyd's like, you better get your ass up out of here. <laughs> what you doing up in my space? You walking up in here without my permission. So she starts trying to boss up a little bit and calls herself confronting Boyd to try to get her gun back. And he's like, okay, sure. I'll give you your gun, but he removes all the bullets and basically just gives her nothing because a gun without bullets is 
just as good as having an axe. You know, you might as well be throwing a spear or something. So he's like, you'll get your bullets back when I feel you deserve them, which is really the right move because she doesn't really know what the hell is going on here. And who's to say that she won't start firing off shots again out of panic and possibly kill someone else. So that was definitely the right move. But that whole exchange between her and Boyd was really cool. I wasn't sure if like Boyd was getting ready to smack her upside of her head or anything <laughs> because it looks like she was about to push him to the limit. Officer Acosta was definitely about to fuck around and find out for sure. Then we cut back out in the woods near the village with Tabitha, Jim, Ethan, and Jade as she discusses her dream with the three rocks and how it all feels real and how she was being chased and she would hide behind them and when she would go to look up to look back at whatever they were running from, whatever she was hiding from, she would wake up every time. Then Jade goes on to discuss the theory of free will and how Tabitha technically never had it since she was already having dreams about the place and how if she was already having dreams about this place, she was always going to end up there. She was always going to end up back at the tree in the road. And this really brings forth a very interesting theory of the whole reincarnation cycle and Tabitha possibly being Miranda. Because more and more, I'm really starting to think that Tabitha's dreams weren't really dreams and they were really a version of her that was there at a different point in time. And everything is starting to make sense in form of Tabitha seeing the bracelet and finding out the things that she knew about Miranda and saving the kids and all of those things is starting to more and more look like things that she has seen before, meaning that this is a cycle and that she has been here before. But then the question becomes now, if Tabitha is Miranda and she has been here before, why does she keep returning? Is it really related to the children or is she supposed to solve a bigger mystery here? And my theory is that Tabitha really is supposed to save the children. And that is the reason why she keeps returning back to the town as different people, as different versions of herself, Miranda, and every other woman who has came to the town before them with the task of having to save the children. This is a mission that never gets resolved, which is why they keep coming back, and everything we've seen so far seems to point to that. Then we cut back to Colony House downstairs with Ellis and Tilly as Tilly walks up and she's trying to give Ellis some wise words and, and trying to let him know that she's there to help and that he doesn't have to pretend because she already knows about Fatima eating the rotten shit. And of course, Ellis is like, you know, why do you care so much? And she's like, well, I'm old, I have cancer, and you guys are a love story and I care about romance. So basically, as always, Tilly is always trying to make it seem like she's just willing to help out of the kindness of her heart and maybe this is true and maybe it's not who knows but it seems to be like that's what she's always trying to portray then upstairs in the bedroom with Fatima her belly starts doing weird shit and we can see her ribs and her stomach starts caving in and she starts screaming like she's in pain and everything starts going crazy so Ellis overhears this he runs upstairs to check on her and then we see that nothing's really happening and everything's fine and she's fine and we're still really trying to figure out right now is this just the town messing with Fatima or is she actually really experiencing these things that people just aren't seeing was she actually really in pain or was that a hallucination we're still trying to figure this out and it's really not getting any easier <laughs> Then we cut back to Randall and Julie as they're on their drive and it looks like Julie's about to get her turn but before that even happens, the cicadas show back up and start to torture the hell out of Randall to the point where he has to pull over, jumps out of the car and he just takes off into the woods. He's pretty frustrated and Julie has to run behind him. Then we end up cutting back to town at the clinic where Ellis and Christy are fighting and Boyd walks in to break all of this shit up but we can see that they're fighting because Ellis is trying to take some medication back to Fatima because he really just doesn't know what the hell to do. But Christy is like, you really can't use this because we don't know what we need to do with Fatima. So we can't jump to any conclusions and just start giving her random medication, hoping that the shit will help her. So Boyd is there to break up all of this and talk to Ellis and like, hey, we'll, we'll figure this shit out eventually, but this just isn't the right move right now. Then we cut back out in the woods where something really weird happens, where Randall and Julie are being drawn towards the weird ruins out in the woods that they were trapped in back in season two. Julie points out to Randall that she feels something and it's pretty clear that Randall also feels it too and it really makes you think back to the point in the car when the cicada showed up where they supposed to stop at this point in the road the whole time which once again bringing up the whole theory again from jade where whether or not if it's free will it seems like the cicada showed up at a very particular time where randall got out of the car walked into the woods and it was always going to lead them to this point in the woods where they were always going to approach the ruins but in this moment we don't see julie and randall try anything they don't try to walk closer to it or or try to get a closer look at this 
this feeling that they're drawn towards the chamber, they just end up walking away. And honestly, my theory surrounding this situation is that what happened to Marielle, Julie, and Randall was definitely supposed to happen. Maybe this is a positive thing with them being drawn towards it. Maybe they'll end up making some sort of huge discovery if they end up embracing this feeling that they have of being drawn towards the chamber. This could definitely lead to them being more helpful, maybe in the same way that Tabitha was, sort of. This could definitely lead to them possibly having interactions with the boy in white and maybe being more helpful to the people who are currently trapped in the town. I really feel like this could be a good thing for them since they were able to escape the chamber and that was really the only bad thing in that situation. They did end up living through that because Boyd destroyed the music box. Now that they're on the outside looking in, they can discover new details about the chamber that could possibly help everyone. And then the damn episode ends with Fatima killing Tilly. She goes out to the greenhouse to indulge in some good rotten shit eating and instead of indulging in it this time, she tries to walk away. She tries to not eat any of the rotten vegetables, but before she can make it out of the greenhouse, her urge intensifies. Tilly walks in trying to help her, and then she ends up stabbing Tilly in the chest, where she dies and Ellis walks in to witness all of this. And also in Tilly's last breath, she tells Fatima that she has to run because yeah, everybody's about to be on her ass right now. So this is about to get pretty crazy. And I guess almost every theory we had on Tilly is just now destroyed because now she's dead. So she can't really do anything evil or good anymore, which probably means that Tilly was more than likely always good. Unless she ends up coming back from the dead later and doing something. But we actually have yet to see someone actually come back after death in the show. I mean, besides someone's subconscious mind creating them like Father Khatri or Tom from the Barb. So I'm beginning to think that Tilly actually died in this moment and Fatima actually killed her. And I mean, and yeah, she actually killed an innocent woman. I mean, that's the way it seems unless they end up finding dirt on Tilly later. But yeah, Tilly told her to run. And like I've said before, I'm really starting to feel like all of the events in the town may have been things that have occurred before. I really don't think that Tabitha is the only one that's affected by this whole cycle of things that tend to just keep happening. I think all of the events in town to some extent are things that are just repeating themselves. And if this is true, eventually in the end, if they don't succeed, everyone could possibly end up dying here again before the cycle continues and a new batch of residents now enter the town again. But as always, guys, I'm not gonna get too ahead of myself because I don't have too much information at this time to reinforce my theory. So yeah, that's just where I think things are going. If I had to rate this episode, I'd probably give it like a seven. I feel like this was definitely more filler once again. We don't really get anything substantial. We do creep up on a little more details as usual. We still end up getting a little bit more drip feeding on more details and information about the characters. But as far as the episode goes, I'd probably give it like a 6.5 or a seven, but definitely a little bit more filler this episode. So let's see where things go with episode eight. Let me know your thoughts down below. And as always guys, thank you for watching.